Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live today. It's Saturday, October 27, 2012. Our topic today is a Symbolu Webmix Shareathon. Our special guest today is Pam Cranford, and we're also joined with Nina Perry, and they're going to be helped facilitating today's conversation. They've got great things to share, but you also are um, participants in the show and our guests, so that if you do have a web mix to share, we're going to be asking you to, to raise your hand a little later on in the show and uh, come to the mic and uh, tell us what you've been doing. Just as a reminder, though, if you're going to come to the mic, we need you to run the audio setup wizard, which is under tools, audio, audio setup wizard, or in the top left-hand pod. Uh, panel audio video, you're going to see a microphone with a red starburst. You need to click on that and make sure it works. We sent out our appreciation this morning to Tammy Moore, who's doing closed captioning. And if uh, you, our closed captioning is not working as it normally does today, so if you do need assistance with English as a first language, then raise your hand and Tammy will set up a chat directly between you to help out. Kim is not well today, and our faithful um, support system, Lori Moffitt, will be helping us with the questions a little later on in the session. So our best wishes go out to Kim today. So I'd like to get started, and the first thing we need to do is talk about some of the resources that we have put together today, and one is our live binder. And just to get you to notice that we did do a session in June with Pam, and it was phenomenal, and we collected tremendous resources from Pam. And so in the live binder, there is a specific uh, link there for the live binder for the June show. So all the links that were in that live binder are now incorporated into this live binder, which is a great thing about live binder being able to connect back and forth to each other. And Peggy has dropped a link in the chat for the live binder. During the session, if there are uh, links being shared that are um, appropriate or matching today's topic, we will collect those links and those links as well will be dropped in and added to the um, live binder. As well as the live binder, most of you do know that we have a website live.classroom20.com, but the most important thing is our archives and resources page because it keeps a record of today's Blackboard Collaborate recording. We have an MP4. Uh, video so that you can embed it somewhere else if you needed to share it with someone. We have an audio file. We have the chat log from today and as well all the links, thanks to Peggy, are posted in this blog post so that you can have access to the resources there as well. So you can go to our website and the blog post as well as going to the live finder to get all this information. So it's time for you all to have some fun and, and I need you to remember the whiteboard tools on the left of the whiteboard the second one down is a little starburst. I need you to click on that and drag it over to where you're located in the world. And again, if that doesn't work for you, just type uh, in the chat where you're located. I think uh, there are a couple of Canadians with me this morning. We have somebody in Hawaii out there, or Shambles, are you moving around? And he's in Thailand. Just give us an idea. That Thanks, Peggy. It is nice to see where everyone is located. <laughs> you wish, Pam. My um, son and his partner just came back from a, a vacation in Hawaii, so they really enjoyed it, and I was very jealous. And it's warm, Peggy. It's raining. Cats and dogs here. So great. Thanks, everyone, for sharing where you are located today. We are going to move on to our next fun for you, and that's the voting. If you recall on the participants window, the fourth icon on the right, it's got a little voting option. If you click on it, you're going to give a yes or no to the question, have you ever created a Symbolu web mix before? So I'm just waiting for people to vote. So it's a green check if you have and a red X if you haven't. I'll just let you know what the results are. So far, um, there are about 50% of the room who have created a web mix, and I hope that you're going to have a chance to share as either coming to the mic or dropping a link to it in the chat window. So our next question, let me clear the votes, 
um, is, have you ever created a Symbaloo web mix and shared it with someone? Yes, if you have, no, if you haven't. I think most people haven't had a chance to vote. Let's just take a look at it. About a third. Some of it have not been able to vote, and that's probably me because I'm not uh, can't do two things at once. But I have created one and I shared it with someone, so I can add that to the numbers. It's a ind good indicator of um, what people have been able to do. So our last poll question. Let me clear the votes, everybody. Are you currently using an app to aggregate your web links, RSS feeds, and readers? We think that's a kind of a curious question, but you're going to uh, get some great ideas in a minute about using Symbaloo to do that. So, are you doing that? I mean, I've been using Google Reader and I go excuse me, I've been using iGoogle, and some people are doing other things. I know we're going to lose iGoogle, so I'm really looking forward to hearing more from Pan and others today about how they're going to get around that and. This specifically, Pam's going to tell us with, with uh, Simbaloo. I think most people have had a chance to vote, so I am going to publish the results to the whiteboard. And well, about forty percent of the group here have are using some kind of aggregator for their content. Thank you very much, everyone. We appreciate you taking part in the voting in the world map. It is my opportunity now to introduce again today's show. The topic is Symbaloo WebMix Shareathon, and you're all the guests. Our uh, facilitator this morning is Pam Cranford, and I just want to say a few things about Cram. Cram. Sorry, Pam. That's Pam right. is a teacher. <laughs> White House the district. She's been there for 29 years. Her experience includes kindergarten, Title I, gifted and talented, and special education. She was a TISA classroom teacher of the year and is currently the testing coordinator manager at White Oaks Intermediate School. Back in June 16th, again, we told you she was the featured teacher and shared a phenomenal amount of information. And in fact, she's going to continue on with the great work that she did back in June. So we're very appreciative of you taking the time again, Pam, and uh, helping us facilitate this today's session. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to you with a special thanks from everyone. Thank you, Pete. Uh, I will tell you, uh, yes, I, I, I'm glad this is not a visual because I am in the deer stand and I am covered in camo. And and um, I, I promise, though, that you won't hear any loud gunshots while while this is going on. I'm, I'm putting that on hold for right now. So. Our newbie question that is, what is Symbaloo and how can it help me in and out of the classroom? So, Pam, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, I see that several people here already use Symbaloo, so that is exciting to me. And I also even see from the chat box that uh, many of you were here back in June when we talked about Symbaloo uh, initially, and that is that is even. Um, a source of greater excitement to me because maybe you took some of the things and, and created some things that you can share with us. That's going to be exciting. So Symbaloo, uh, just let me say that uh, the question was earlier, you know, do you use something, some kind of uh, um, uh, web 2.0 tool or something to curate all of your resources? I, I go to so many conferences and I, and I pick up so many wonderful ideas from other people and I've got all these resources and I was explaining before my toolbar is completely full and my bookmark page is just so full I can't find anything on it anymore. So when Symbaloo came along but I jumped on it because I'm sure like all all of you, I mean, you have links to all these places. You're all on Facebook, and I'm no telling how many boards you have on Pinterest and links and live finders and, you know, the blogs that you follow and everything. So <clears throat> when Symbaloo came along, it was it was truly an answer to almost every issue that I have as far as organizing all of my resources, because this is kind of how they were. Uh, I, I call this your, your brain on tags. So, you know, whenever I had all my bookmarks, Pages and everything um, uh, across the top in my toolbar and my in my bookmark page, I couldn't find any of them. So yes, I was very frustrated because I knew I had it, I just couldn't find it. But now with with Symbaloo, 
they're all organized and I pretty much can access them anytime I want to just by clicking on the web mix that they're contained within. So if you do not have a Symbaloo account and I saw where some of you, excuse me, some of you do not, you're going to want one before you leave here today. So let's start with Symbaloo. Now there are Symbaloo.com and then there's Symbaloo.edu.com. And Nana and I spoke earlier, I don't see any difference right now and there may be uh, some not uh, noticeable difference down the road, but I, I don't see any right now. I did go ahead, and, and I urge you to do this too, I did go ahead and I completed the Symbaloo EDU course, um, and it gave me a lot of information that, that, I did not, that I did not know on my own. So even visiting the Symbaloo blog um, and, and asking questions, uh, there's a Symbaloo chat that takes place every Wednesday on Twitter, and and I take place in that I take part in that. Very very good place to pose some questions. When you register for uh, your Symbaloo, then you are going to um, see a screen such as this. It's going to send you an email, and then you'll have to go in and you'll have to activate your account, and then you can get started on your webmix. When I open my browser, this is my homepage, and I saw I think Patty said that her um, Symbaloo, that her, that her homepage now on Chrome is Symbaloo, mine also. Um, I, heard a, I heard a little ding there, I didn't know if that was a question coming in. But this is, this is my homepage and I will share this link with you. I think she maybe already has put it in the uh, chat box, if not she'll list it later. Um, and it has everything that I, that I need on this homepage. I'm going to start sharing my uh, screen with you, see if I can get that up. All right. And this is my home page. I want you to know, like in Symbaloo, that you can go in and when you click Edit Your Web Mix, you can actually go in and you can change the background. You can choose one that they already have or you can um, pick your own. And, and I chose my own. Um, I want to share with you today some uh, ideas that we use Symbaloo for at uh, White Oak. And then uh, I'm going to ask Nina to, to ring in and tell you how she has really just completely changed the, the organization of, the, of her computer lab with Symbaloo. Uh, like I said, this is my home page. And after I became familiar with Symbaloo, it dawned on me that my teachers, my, my classroom teachers, um, would benefit from this. So we had some professional development training and because I had some teachers who, uh, some of them are very uh, technology savvy and then some of them are just beginner, we're all at different places. So I mean it would take them they would come down to my office to maybe enter some information on DMAC on a student and it would take them forever to even locate the link to get to where they needed to be. And so this just gives them a one click, one click away and they are right there where they need to be. So I shared this with, with them and they were able to go in and customize their own homepage and many of them have done that. We also have some uh, teachers, our computers are frozen, uh, they have deep freeze on them, so the teachers, um, they would go home and they would find all these sites and they would put all these bookmarks on their uh, desktops and then they'd cut, shut their computer down at, at night and they'd be all gone. So this right here um, enabled them to put this as their home screen, they could adjust it at home and because it's web based, when they turned their computer on the next day, all the data was there. So they did not have to um, go in and, and redo that every single morning. Okay, I want to show you this web mix here. This is just a web mix that uh, I believe I did share the link. If I didn't share the link with this one, Peggy, if you will let me know and I will get you the link to this one. Um, this is just a collection of how-tos. It's just, if you do a search, let me, talk, let me show you. You go up to the gallery and you do a search for I think I titled most of them WISD, and if you do a search, then the WISD sites that I've shared, they're going to be here. And if you want to view it, if you want to view that web mix and see if there's something on that web mix that, you, that might be of interest to you, then you can actually look at it before you add it to your own. 
Okay, let me go back. Go back to my simple list. All right, so this is just a web mix on how to's, like real short little videos. And I, and I was told that the videos really didn't show up well when I'm doing app sharing. So I'll just I'll just leave this up for you guys. It, it shows you what tiles are, how to create tiles, how to edit, delete them. I won't go down each one, but it it gives you some very useful useful tools and little short video clips of how to do just almost anything with Symbolu. I also want to show you this one. This is a good idea for, for using Symbaloo. Symbaloo, um, this, is, this was created by a fifth grade teacher. I found it in the gallery when I was searching. And you can just about embed anything or link anything in a Symbaloo tile. Anything that has a URL, you can also embed. Uh, these right here are um, Vokies that a fifth grade class, they went in and they created Vokies. And you're not going to be able to hear the bogey, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, there you go. Anyway, each one of the fifth grade students, they went in and they created a goodbye message to uh, the, the whole entire class, goodbye from fifth grade. And the teacher used this at the end of the year so that each student can go in and listen to all their classmates goodbye. And then be, you can use it again at the beginning of the year for your fourth graders who are moving into fifth grade so they know what to anticipate during that fifth grade year, so the good things and, and things that they would remember and build some memories around. All of these are just bokeys. And the children went in and created these. So I thought that was a really, really good use for Symbolu. Uh, another um, web mix that I found in the gallery. This was a web mix that a teacher created to introduce her students to informational text. And she has created a Vokey here. And the directions from the teacher uh, in the very first Vokey, it's the teacher. And she's telling the students, she tells them to go to each one of the websites and look at the presentation of informational text, the manner in which it is presented. And after they visit Learning Network, Wonderop Wonderopolis, and all of these different sites, then she asked them to go to the cork board and leave a message to her. So they are supposed to go in and they're supposed to tell which site that they liked and why. So you can see why that, how that would be really, really uh, a fun for our kids to do. And then after they finished leaving her a message on Corkboard, she went into her Google Docs. And using Google Docs forms, she created a, a little, just a little interest inventory for them to create. Three facts you learned about the article, two interesting things you need to read, question you have. Anyway, this was created just in Google Docs. It's just a Google form. So all that right here is included on this WebMix. And just so you could use a WebMix in Symbolu for any particular unit you were studying, uh, here's a WebMix on dolphins. Changing the background to match the, um, the unit. And start here, and it tells you exactly where to progress and what to do next. And it tells you how to use each one of these tools. So these are just different multimedia information that you can use. And, and it tells the, the kiddos how to um, put their information into a WebMix. Um, we started a new life skills class this year at White Oak. So we had to hire two new teachers. And I was telling Peggy about this last night. We had to hire two new teachers. So, you know, we set up a new classroom and we bought all the furniture and we, you know, hired new staff to, to uh, teach the students. And so we didn't have a lot of resources left for books. She has a few books in there, but not nearly enough for what she needs. She has six children. So we went online and we found all these videos on YouTube and, and different places, stories online, um, uh, I think, um, um, is it that Barnes and Nobles has a, a place that stories are read? So when you click on these, these are all storybooks, first grade readers. So when you click on these, uh, it actually brings up the story. And so, like I said, anything that has that URL, you can add it to a Symbolu tile. That one hasn't loaded yet. Here it comes up. This is from Barnes and Nobles, but it is a story of green eggs and ham. So all of these um, are very. Um, 
uh, age appropriate for our life skills kids. And so this gets her, as you can tell, look, you can, she's got about 40 books here. And if you want to go in and add to this, then we could go in and even add more books. Now I want to show you something that's really, really um, great as far as um, it, this type of web mix in that life skills class. We don't have computers for all those children in life skills class, but what we do have is we do have some iPod touches. And our life skills teacher also wrote two grants for Limeades for Learning this year. So she got from Sonic and Donors 2, she was awarded four uh, iPod touches. Aha. We finally got that book going. All right, so um, what I'm going to show you right now is with, I'm going to use this app called Reflection, and I am going to share my uh, my iPad screen with you. There you go. Now let me know if you cannot see that. Peggy, can you guys see that? Yes, we can. Okay, I wanted to know if you could see that. All right, um, our students with the Symbolute app downloaded to their um, iTouch device can actually go in and they can go to this first grade reading and there are all their books right there on their iPod Touches. And this is in my iPad, but same thing on their iPod Touches. And um, the reason that I love the Symbolu app on an iPad or iPod Touch, you know, your iPads, you're limited to um, 11 pages. So if you, even if you put yours in folders, like I have mine in, I have all my apps in folders, um, you know, all my reading, I'm going to have five folders of reading, but, hold on, didn't mean to do that. Uh, but with Symbolu, with the Symbolu app, you can see, I'll go back to my library. No, I'm not going to write it right now. Go back to my library. I have all of these web mixes, and my web mixes, I can make my web mixes as large as I want to. So with my web mixes, I can actually go in. Here's another web mix that I saved. It's just Christmas fun. It's just Christmas games. I make seasonal web mixes so that I have those ready for the kiddos. So you can see that just by handing them the iTouch, they're able to um, also... Uh, see the benefits or get the benefits from my Symbolu web mixes. So they don't have to be sitting at a computer to be able to to use Symbolu. So I wanted to point that out. Let me go back and turn off my sharing here. All right. Um, third grade, if you just go into your gallery and you do searches for third grade or whatever grade level you teach, then what you can do is you can add this web mix to your, um, to your own web mixes. And then while you can't go in and edit this one, I mean, like you can go in and move it, but you can't go in and edit it, what you can do is if there are tiles that you see on a web mix that you like or want to use that tile, then you can add that web mix to your own and then you can go up and you can create your own web mix and copy those tiles and move them over and then customize them the way that it suits your purpose. All right, so let me show you. Um, someone, I saw that someone said that they had used a uh, web mix, assembly web web mix to do presentation. And that's actually the very first time that we used Symbolu was to do a presentation. And our technology, our chief of technologies, had asked us to do a presentation and just, he wanted it to be like speed dating. He just wanted us to touch on something for about 30 seconds or even a minute. And so he had five of us. These are the five teachers. Nine is here with us today. So this have, we had two second grade teachers, the fifth grade teacher, our computer lab teacher, and myself. So these five teachers, all these tiles, unbeknownst to all of our people who were watching, they're color coordinated because when you create a tile, you can make it whatever color you want it to be. So they're color coordinated. So the white tiles were mine and the orange tiles were different teachers and the red, I think, were mine. So when it, when we were, as we were going down the row, we knew immediately, unlike slides that were popping up and you had to remember which slide was, was your, we knew immediately which tile or which speaker was supposed to be speaking about that tile just based on the color of it. 
very good organizational strategy for students if they're having to present, uh, make a presentation to the class. They could create a web mix and, and similarly organize it like this. So, and then remember I told you that you could copy and move tiles. So uh, a few months later, he asked us to do the same thing, but two of our teachers happened to be unavailable. So we were able just to move those tiles over uh, to a new web mix and then group them according to color. These were all nines down here at the bottom, and then these, was, these were Emily's. And so the four of us went in, and this is how we did our presentation then. And it was very easy and very quick to, to get it organized and moved over. OK. Um, Nina discovered this on me. Let me show you this one. Um, I was looking for my my principal was looking for a motivational uh, video. She said, "I just I just need one little short motivational clip video." Well, I went into Symbolu and I went to the gallery and I did a search for motivational uh, videos and just a web mix of motivational videos. And I found this uh, web mix and I did share this one on the. Um, on the document, Peggy, so you should have the link for this one. Uh, anyway, I found this uh, web mix, and it's just short videos uh, of, of little, um, I mean, you could show a different one at every faculty meeting, or, um, you know, introduce your presentation with it, or show it to your children, your classroom, to, to motivate them. Here's one paying attention, did you know? So there's, these are, this is a very, very good web mix of so just a, a big, large collection of, of um, uh, motivational clips. Um, also, I shared this link with, um, with Peggy. And this is a Symbolu tutorial um, web mix. And it is very good also. Most of them are videos. So uh, again, they told me that um, uh, videos wouldn't load very well on app sharing. So uh, this link to this web mix will be shared. And so you can go and you can pick that up and you can add it to your symbol. Uh, I do want to show last time that I was here, I, I took, this was a little web mix that I created as we went along. Um, I, I want to show you, um, there is one link here, um, right here. This is what's a suggestion that I made last time that I spoke. And this is if, if, if a teacher would have on her own web mix a link that linked to her class. And then she could take just a snapshot picture of each of her students. So that uh, and uh, you don't have to put a name on them, but you could put a name on them. These are just four of my eight grandchildren. So I just started off with them. And what this does is this tile, remember you have to link a tile to something. You can't just create a tile just because it's cute. Even though she is really cute, um, if I click on her tile, it will take you to her, um, it'll take you straight to her blog. So if you have students who are blogging, then you can create a web mix that will take you straight to that student's blog. Now, it doesn't have to just be a blog. You can link to student work. And I also spoke at that time, and I've got Tyler's hooked up. What his links to is another web mix. So Tyler's picture on the whole class of my pictures will link to um, his personal blog, his personal web mix. Now, the neat thing about this is I can share the link to just this web mix with just his parents or grandparents or guardians or aunts or uncles or whoever you know he chooses to give that link to. But it's not out there in the public. You're not going to be able to search for it in the gallery because it's not in the gallery search. But um, what I have done is I went in and I created a web mix that was the correct dimensions that I wanted, and you can expand it up or down or to the side, left or right, however you need to expand it. And so I divided it up. I wanted eight tiles for each six weeks. Now remember, these tiles have to be linked to something. You can't just have a, a colored tile. So right now, each of these tiles are linked to the elementary blog. Every one of these are linked to the elementary blog. But as Tyler finishes a work sample that I want to share with the parent during the first six weeks, I can go in and click and I can edit that tile and I can link that tile to um, 
to that particular work sample. I can upload it into Google Docs. I can scan it, upload it into Google Docs, that work sample, and then I can share that Google Doc. I can take that link and I can attach it to this tile so that when I share this web mix of Tyler with just his parents, they can see eight different uh, work samples that I've selected to share with them for the first six weeks, the second six weeks, third six weeks, and hopefully they'll see the progression of his work, how he's improving from first six weeks to last six weeks. Now, these eight tiles right here are linked to Tyler's personal blog, and each one of those tiles are linked to a specific post. So it is my goal that um, over the course of the year, there would be eight different posts that he would have that he would choose to link to a separate tile. All right. These tiles here are specific tiles to Web 2.0 tools or websites that are um, uh, appropriate for where he is in his learning. Like this one right here is a dictionary or an thesaurus, and it helps him with uh, finding rhyming words if he, if he was writing a poem. Um, math, multiplication chart. So you could have the exact same kind of setup for every student in your classroom and even your GT kids all the way down to your life skills kids and these tiles would just be different according to their needs. So you could have the same uh, kind of activity for them but very differentiated so that it would meet their needs all the way down to, to from the the basic needs all the way up to enrichment needs. Um, this this tile right here actually was in the search bar. I did a search. I just did a search for tiles. And this this task list, I love this because it becomes his online journal and his assignments. So if I need him to do um, um, math pages uh, 14 through 16, then he just posts it right there and clicks add. And it becomes on his little task to do list. When he finishes it, let's say reading chapter three, he's finished it, then he clicks done, and then it's deleted from his list. I love that. All right. Um, let me pull up Miss Nina's. All right. Nina, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This year, Nina walked into the computer lab, and she just had a, a, a just a real a revelation. Did you not, Nina? Yes, I did. <laughs> when we got to studying, yes, when we got to studying uh, and learning about Symbolu, she said, yeah, I thought she said she would find these these. Uh, she used to do t use two clicks, and what was the other one that you used, Nina? You had all your well. What I ended up doing is just going to every single computer and opening up the web pages that I would want them to go to, whether it be my YouTube channel because I shared a how-to video with them or whatever. It may be three or four uh, tabs that I had across the top, and then I would set it as the home page. So when they came to the computer and they clicked on Firefox, they would all open up. But I had to do that on every single computer, and every time I changed my right. lesson plan, I had to go back up there and change every single computer. Right, 25 of them. Which was very time well, consuming. <laughs> yes, it was. So what she did is she went in and she created a web mix just for the computer lab. This is what all the computer labs they pop up to. Uh, this is her home screen now. They pop up. Then she has links to. She has different web mixes for third, fourth, and fifth grade. Now, when uh, when you click on the third grade, now I know that the, the people who are in the in the room with us, this won't mean a whole lot to you visually, but let me tell you what it means to us. We have five third grade teachers. Each third grade teacher has their own personal class, class classroom blog, sorry. And then each class, each third grade class, has their own student blog. So let me just pull up one of those student blogs if I can, if I can get one to pop up. I'll go back here while that's loading. So each of these are their, are the students' classroom teachers blogs and then corresponding that right straight across, Nina has put a tile that matches their um, 
their student blog. So if Nina is wanting them to post something on their blog, these students, if they're in third grade, they click on the third grade web mix, they look at their for their student blog and they go right straight to it. Here's the student blog for Miss Laboo's class. So she goes right here, the kids click on their student blogs and then there's their name. So that's how easily and quickly they can get to their blog. No more of this sitting there having to type in the URL and they mistyped a letter or mistyped a, 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 a period, didn't get it in the right place or misspelled something. They click right there and it's, it's right there. Now I also went to each individual um, grade level and she collaborates so closely with them and she asks them what are you studying and what do you need for me to put on this particular web mix that you're studying and that's what she's done. So you'll see different uh, links to different sites on their, on their web mixes. Fourth grade is set up very similarly. Uh, here are the fourth grade teachers, their teacher's blog and then here are their student blogs that correspond to their homeroom teacher. And then again, she has set up um, based on what fourth grade teachers have shared with her she, and or whatever activity Nina is having them to do in the lab, she has set them up to uh, their own web mix. And then fifth grade, same thing. Here are the students, the teacher's blogs and the student's blogs. This is their language arts teacher, that's why she's on there. And she has a, a page of just tons and tons of excellent favorites, uh, favorites that fifth grade uses all the time. Um, one of the things that I love that Nina has done is she has created a web mix that's called I'm Done, Now What? Nina, you want to explain that, how you use that? Well, just when they get through with the activity that I have uh, planned for them, if there's extra time in the computer lab, which there usually isn't, uh, <laughs> instead of them coming and asking me what do I do now, they just know they can go to that web mix and anything on that uh, web mix, they're, they're free to explore and I encourage them to do that. Rather than just clicking on primary games and having a little car yes. jump over a ton of cars. Amen. There's, there's lots of other things that they can do with their time. Yes, very good. Okay, Nina also created a women. Nina is our GT uh, teacher and she teaches a robotics class. So Nina, explain this web mix. Well, I know very little about robotics. I got this assignment last year uh, toward the end of the year and we had to uh, prepare fifth graders for a competition and we had about two months to do that. And I was told, don't worry about it, you know, you just give those uh, boys and girls those kits, show them the program and they will figure it out and that's exactly what they did. But I have uh, four, new fourth and fifth graders this year coming in with no knowledge whatsoever about robotics and I don't know a whole lot either. And we have a lot less time now because I only see them once a week for about 30 minutes. So I thought the best way for them to, to learn is just to start building and, and downloading programs that have already been created so they can see what that's making the robot do. And so I found a really cool website that had all different uh, building designs and I just went in and created tiles for each one of those different things. And so when they come in, they just go to the computer and they, they pick which one of these they want to do and they click on it and if you just click on those, you can see it's got very clear step-by-step -step building instructions and then some of them also have the program that you can download to make it do something. So um, you'll see there up at the top there's a building and a program link. And um, mm -hmm. so they're just now getting started with this, but it, that, that caused them to be very excited when they saw all the possibilities. So by the time we get to competition in May, they're going to understand how all those components work together and, and be able to do an awesome job. And it made my life a lot Excellent. easier because Excellent. it's all on one page. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> all exactly. Right. Um, but yeah, this, this is a uh, web mix that Nina created and this is um, science definitions science definitions and I believe you, you they created, um, did they use an Animoto to do these, Nina? Well, this was last year and it was a project for the fifth graders. I gave them a science term and they had to go define it and they could use Animoto. They were in pairs. So they could either use Animoto or they could use the green screen and I uploaded it to my YouTube channel. And last year when they got them all completed, I put them on a page on my blog to display them. 
but it's mm -hmm. very cumbersome to have to scroll all the way to the end of the page. And what I love about Symbaloo is you put that Animoto or that YouTube in a tile, and when you click it, it opens in the center of the screen, and you never have to leave the page. And right. there's no scrolling down. You can very easily, you know, find the one that you you want to watch. And and did you know, and I don't know if you knew this or not, Nana, uh, Nana, that you can like if you're just watching one in the center, then you have the option of uh, just, uh, clicking out to the side, and it'll go down through every one of your tiles. See, no, I did not know that. I've learned something. Well, else. there you go. You have you have <laughs> learned something today. So yeah, right there at the bottom, you can go in and you can click, and uh, from your that from your just, embedded video, you can you can just click and just it'll, awesome. it'll take you right it'll take you right down. So so you can just go from the center, like if you had it up on your screen, up on your projector or something, you wouldn't have to go right. back and forth to your web mix. You could just look right it. there. Look right. you there, and I did the same right. thing. Um, I was just going to say there's one more web mix that I have I, at the last year to encourage the boys and girls to get their job done as far as getting their chair pushed in and cleaning up and not you know dawdle because I usually I have another class coming in back to back and I want the, to get them lined up and ready to go then I offer to show them a quick funny video clip and I had been saving those and putting them on a, a separate page Here in um, on my blog also. And I created a web mix of my funny uh, YouTube videos. And what I love about that is once I've shown it for the week, I can pull it down to the bottom. I can move it. And so I know what I have not shown and what I have shown. And exactly. It's very so easy like to show one and if that's done, you can yeah. move it on down. Right. You drag it on down like that. And it, that's your way of keeping up with it. Awesome. Right. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we have student blogs. All of our third, fourth, and fifth grade students have their own uh, school emails uh, that just started last year, and so their blogs have been set up to um, uh, to correspond with that email, not the teacher's email, like it was done in the past. But the teacher's still responsible for keeping her eye on uh, the postings that the kiddos are doing. They become so knowledgeable about posting, they go home and they work on this all the time. They're posting stuff all the time, not just stuff at school, not just uh, assignments that have been made in the computer lab or in reading language arts or in math. They they make posts in their math instead of writing in their math journal now. They make a post. They post in science. So every subject they're posting on their blog, it becomes their e-portfolio. This, this school email, the same one, will follow them all the way up to when they start applying for colleges after they graduate high school. So it becomes real important that the, the teacher, you know, moderates what they're what they are um, posting. Well, you can go in and you can create. I'll, I'll show you in a in a little while a web mix of uh, RSS feeds for some blogs that I follow. But uh, Nina has gone in and she has shown the teacher how to uh, create a tile for each child in her class. And notice that she's gone color coordinated: pink for the girls and blue for the boys. And uh, so uh, when you click on, um, say, Tiffany's, when you click on Tiffany's, then it shows that teacher right in the center square all the blog posts that Tiffany has made. And if the teacher's already read it, then it will gray it out. So same way. So just in a matter of seconds, the teacher, if she's made an assignment, then she can go in and she can see if, um, see, let's say she made an assignment of Happy Halloween, then here's a little summary right down here at the bottom of, of what he's written. So she can see that if they yeah. if they made that post or you know check to see if they followed um, uh, citizen and let me tell you how this is citizenship rules. Let me tell you how this has helped me. Uh, well number one when you create this web mix, when you create a web mix you're given the op the option of either tiles or RSS feeds. I did not create this as an RSS feed. I use tiles because if you do it as an RSS feed, you'll you'll see that it takes up about six or eight tiles. I'll show and you. I wanted all of them on one page, so I created it as tiles. But when I put in the URL, our we use um, EduBlogs, and with our blogs, all you have to do is put a slash feed at the end of it, and it creates it as a feed. So it opens up in that center box. But okay, so you, me so you, I assign something. I assign them a, 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 a thing to do that's going to end up on their blog, like create a Vokey or uh, do a blog post about something in, in 
This way, when they're sitting on the floor in front of the projector and I'm fixing to send them back to the table, I can show them visually. I know whether you did that job or not, and I can do that within five minutes. I can click on each one and know whether they have a post that's called Row Your Site and if they included everything. So they know mm -hmm. that I know whether they've gotten their job done or not. So that that's and this a is very what you're useful talking tool. about. If you if you choose RSS feeds, then this is what your your tile, your large tile, will look like. It will take up uh, nine square tiles. It'll it'll be nice. just like that. Whereas whereas if you choose a uh, tile, it's just going to take up one tile, right? Right, and then All it right. just opens in the center. Okay. Uh, we did some training. Uh, with our staff, and it was open up from high school all the way down to primary. And so uh, Nine and I did Symbaloo. We did some training with them. And so we got a list of who was coming, and we wanted to make sure that we had something that was going to be applicable to every grade level that was represented. So we had some high school Spanish teachers, so we went in and we made a web mix of some Spanish videos and our Spanish teacher happened to be on the Power on Texas video, so we pulled some of her videos in there that so that she could have them there to show the students who were her new students that were coming in. Our, our music teacher, our primary music teacher, and our elementary PE teacher worked together and began a web mix of uh, brain break videos. So these little videos are just something they use either at the very end of class or maybe in the middle of class if the kids are getting too wiggly. And uh, so this is just their little uh, web mix that they have started of brain break videos. But again, the teachers collaborated, a primary teacher, an elementary teacher uh, collaborated from different um, areas of instruction, one in music and one in uh, PE. So I, I just thought that was really, really uh, good too. Uh, also, Nana has created a web mix. She has um, she has added videos of Grandparents' Day. She uh, helps with Grandparents' Day, and um, without these being on, yes. I guess you'll yes. add to it this year. You'll add to this web mix this year, and um, it can just go grow on and on and on. And she can share that video. Um, you know, during that during that that special occasion when all the grandparents come, she can print up this this link to this this uh, web mix and, and share it with everybody and, and hand those out. She makes she does an outstanding job on that day. All right, I wanted to show you if anyone's interested, and I guess um, I guess I, oh, Nana, I want you to share uh, that you have a uh, you have your own personal um, uh, web mix also your own personal symbol that you log in with a different well, email. Well, I have a web mix and called, called Nini Videos. Uh, yes. Nini where I'm video, all right? the videos for my uh, that I have of my grandchildren, and that way I can share it just privately okay. with the moms of my two grandbabies. And yes, but you do. Right. Uh, so, so you can share it privately. But yes. Well, I was just going to tell you, Pam. You do have some people that are wanting to know how in the world you did that with the student blog. So make sure you save some time uh, to show that with the student blog, blog like I did Tyler's. Yes. Okay. How you see, created I, those tiles with? See, I can't, I can't see the chat years. right now, but I'm going to show you how. I, do you have time for me to do that right now? Is that right? Well, I know several people have asked, how did she do that? Okay, I'm going to show you how I did that. This is Keynote. I guess you could probably do the same exact thing with um, uh, probably PowerPoint, but I have a Mac, so I use Keynote. And all I did is I just I just open up Keynote and I just choose a, a, a plain white slide. Uh, I use Keynote a lot just as a blank, uh, almost a scrapbooking tool because I mean I use it a lot in, in presentations and stuff, but I but I use it in in this. Okay, so all I did here is I just I had a picture of Tyler and I drug it and dropped it on this uh, keynote slide, and then I went to let me open up my file that I have here because I already took a picture of it. Um, let me show you. Let me go back to this. Let me just use this one while I'm here. What I did is I went to a blank web mix. Let me close this. Stop. <coughs> As I was trying to do this, I thought, how am I going to do this? So I just clicked right here, this little add button, and I added a web mix. 
and I needed the web links to be a little bit larger than that, so I clicked edit and I just expanded it so that, you know, if you have a large picture that you want to use, so I just kept expanding it. I wanted it to be about six squares. I knew, I, oh no, eight. I wanted it to be eight squares. So what I did then, and as I went and I used, um, I used uh, Jing. And you can just do a screenshot if you want to. But what I did is I wanted to select, I saw this, I opened up Jing. It's a free program. If you don't have it, I highly recommend that you get Jing. It is just invaluable to me. And all I did is I did a screenshot of the size that I wanted. So I did um, I did two by four because I, I I figured eight work samples per six weeks. And you could do six. That's just one a week. Okay. So and I captured the image and and I saved it. Okay. So now I've already got one saved. So let me just open that up real quickly. Okay, so in um, in um, Microsoft uh, on a Mac, on a MacBook on a MacBook there is an option called Instant Alpha. So once you pull your picture up, you just double click to open your image. Once your image is open, um, you go to Instant Alpha, and then you just drag. And once you've got that area selected, then you hit delete. So all it's doing is just taking away that gray background that you, when I jinged it, you, you saw. Um, okay? Any questions you know, about I just that? want to uh, take a look at the time. Yes. We're, we're just, can you hear me? We're just a few minutes in away from the hour. Yeah. I think we'd like a few other people to come to the mic. I know Annette had a web link uh, to share. Yes. So uh, I know our, our time is yes. very short at the I moment. And so Annette, um, if you could share, I think Paula had one to share very quickly, uh, a minute. And then I really don't know how we're going to do question and answer because we're so close to the top of the hour. Uh, maybe. Again, posting your question in the chat, and we can see if Pam and someone else can get back to you. So, uh, Annette, are you mm -hmm. ready to go? I just have to get um, back to the slides. Okay. There you go. Yes, I'm ready to go. Do I need to click on anything like web tour or app sharing? Do you have a link for your web mix? Uh, yes, I just put it in the chat window. Yes, and I'll put it into web tour then. Okay, we'll do. Okay, it's, it's up, I think. Go ahead. The business okay. law? Yes, okay. Uh, yes, um, I teach business law for Park University with my uh, twin sister, Anita, and we thought it would be really neat to create a resource for our students. Each of our business law sections um, contains a well-developed web behind section. We're just losing a bit, Annette. Are you talking right into the mic? Uh, yes, can you hear me better now? Yes, I can. Okay, awesome. Um, for, uh, Okay, we're losing you again, Annette. Well, okay, um, no, I don't know if it's your connection, Annette, so I'm not hearing you at all. No, it's okay. Try again. Okay, can you hear me now? I can. Okay, great. Um, for each panel, I decided to. I'm so disappointed in that because we keep on losing you, and I don't know whether it's the connection that's happening here. You'll be able to see the screen in the you know Peggy's just saying those anyone who has a, a blank screen yes I'm sorry I don't I don't know what is that's happening you're just fading in and out that's a strange one okay okay no problem you. okay 
Paula, did you want to share your web mix? Do you have the link ready for we can pop it in? No, I'm not hearing anything from Paula right at the minute. So uh, the sharing part, I'm sorry, is not working as well. If you do have a web mix that you want to share with us, can you drop your link into the chat so then we can collect them? OK, thanks. Has Paula got the mic now? I'm sorry, I didn't even think about that. Paula, can you go ahead? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, can someone turn off web tour because it's going crazy? Ah, thank you. All right. That, um, I think that was uh, having a effect on everything that we were trying to do. Um, I've used um, Symbolu as my start page when I saw it uh, shared oh several years ago with a, a video on YouTube where a seventh grader was. Um, discussing how she uses it for her personal learning environment. And I thought, well, if a seventh grader can do it, I should be able to do it also. So that's when I started doing it. And um, I have found it to be an excellent resource as my personal start page for when I log onto the web. And um, I have created it some, but I find so many of them in the gallery that are really um, nice to use. And this was one of the first ones that I learned about. I just dropped a link in the chat that um, you know, it was just a way to put together a lesson about dolphins and to share it with your students. So those are just some wonderful ways that it can be used. Uh, I know that a lot of teachers use it as their start page on their um, classroom computers so that the kids, you know, like Pam was saying, don't have any problems typing in, you don't lose your um, you know, your uh, bookmarks, things like that. And it's just a great way to have all of your things connected and collected in one spot and easy to use for the kids. And I think because of its um, for those of us that are visual learners or visual people, it's a wonderful tool to have. And I know Pam didn't get to it today. I think she did it in June. Uh, when you go to create your links, I'm sorry, your um, tiles. Sometimes, you know, if it's a popular website like uh, Twitter, it will have a tile that you just type in in a search and you can add to it. So my personal one, uh, most of them I was able to find, you know, um, within their search gallery. But then there are times when you do have to create your own tile and it really is not that difficult to do. So if you like what you've seen, and I'm sure that you do, you know, give it a shot and check it out. It's a great tool to use. Thanks. Great. Thanks very much for sharing with Paula. And, and again, I'm sorry, we are at the top of the hour and we have to be respectful for everyone's time today. Uh, I just wanted to do our exit for the day. And uh, if um, Pam or Nina, anyone who wants to share their Twitter ID so you can carry on the conversation about your questions that would be really appreciated. So if you could do that, we'd, um, thank you. I just want to give you a heads up for the shows that are coming up this week for Future of Education with Steve Harganon, November the 1st, Thursday. Yale Wishnik on From a Culture of Dependency to a Culture of Success. Uh, November 7th, Wednesday, Flipping Classrooms. On Thursday, November 8th, we have Tony Jackson and Veronica Boyminsilla on Educating for Global Competency, Preparing Our Youth to Engage the World. And a reminder, November the 12th to the 17th is our Global, Educa global Education, a Global Ed Conference on November 12th to 17th. Steve's very strong in uh, promoting this, and I'm hoping that we'll have a bit of uh, an intro introduction of the conference in the next week. Uh, please note that the deadline has been extended for proposal submissions to October the 29th. And for our own shows, we're, we're busy trying to organize, so we'll have uh, on our calendar shortly our guests for the coming month, recognizing that at the end of the month is Thanksgiving in the United States and we won't have a show. Uh, when you 
close out the session, uh, you'll have a chance to fill out a survey, and I'll talk about that in a second. But we ask you, please to nominate someone. He would uh, be a featured teacher for our session this, in the form. Uh, we have a link for that in our live binder is tinyurlcr 2 live featured teacher nominate. Again, a conversation about the survey. We ask you at the end of the show, your window is going to pop up with a browser when you exit Blackboard Collaborate. And you have the opportunity to give us your feedback as well as um, uh, ask for a professional development certificate. And if you don't get that window popping up, please remember you can go to the Live Binder. You'll find a link for the Classroom 20 resources and a link to the survey in that Live Binder. As I just talked about certificate of participation, you need to let us know in the survey that you're looking for one. Recognizing this is simply an indication that you have attended the session. There's no uh, uh, authority behind any of the certificates, but we are appreciative that you had a chance to go through it, and we give one ready for you each week. And Peggy is terrific for uh, collecting all the emails and sending them out to you. It isn't automatic, so please recognize you do need to submit your name in the survey. Again, we have a uh, iTunes U channel for our video and audio collection. There's the link to it. CR20 Live iTunes U, and we have instructions and again our live binder about how to, to access the iTunes. Uh, we have uh, RSS feed. Again, if you want to set up uh, a aggregate, you might want to use Symbaloo to do that. You can find a uh, RSS feed for all our blog posts, which are full of resources throughout the, the show. Here's our special thanks again to Pam and Nina and Annette. Paula, we are able to share with us for everyone to be with us. It is unfortunate. We try to pack everything into the hour, and we just can't do it. So we find other ways to carry the conversation. Again, uh, please check back on our blog for the resources and the live binder. We send out our special thanks to Steve, uh, the founder of Classroom 00, Zero Live, Teacher 20, Future of Education, and Web 20 Labs projects. We're especially appreciative of Weebly.com for providing our uh, website. We are supported tremendously by Blackboard Collaborate for the use of this room. And again, thank you everyone for being with us today and participating in the show. I know there were some great sharings on. Remember, we're going to collect them. We'll put the links in the live binder if they are appropriate. And we'll share the chat log in our blog post. So I am at the top of the hour. And again, I say thank you to uh, Pam and uh, Nina for sharing with us today. Turning that safety off now. OK. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good Saturday. <laughs> Thank you.